Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes, the updates for all our videos and you can also post your queries over here. So moving on to question number one, it says, which of the following statements are correctly related to the RBI's initiative of setting up the innovation hub? So before reading on these statements, let me discuss a bit about this innovation hub. So recently, why I am discussing this concept of innovation hub because recently it was in news where RBI has appointed the new CEO for this hub. So who has been appointed as the CEO of the RBI's this innovation hub? Mr. Rajesh Bansal. He has been appointed as its chief executive officer with effect from 17th May onwards. So, uh, talking about the concept of innovation hub, recently like in April, we had the bi-monthly policy. Okay, I discussed the, uh, I basically talked about that bi-monthly policy in my last session as well, where we discussed in last few sessions as well, where I talked about the uh, PPI concept that under the payments and element system, RBI has taken some initiatives under the monetary policy similarly in la last year august also this policy came up where this concept of innovation hub was introduced so central hub central bank coined this concept in that monetary policy statement which was released in august 2020 the statement on the development and regulatory policies so under that rbi coined the concept of innovation hub and then in november 2020 finally this hub was launched so who was appointed as the chairman of this hub uh, when this hub was launched then uh, it was decided that there is a need of some guidance or of some guiding committee of someone who will manage this hub and thus a governing council was formed and that council was led by a chairperson so who was the chairperson Sen Pathy Krish Gopal Krishnan was its chairperson so central bank appointed the Infosys co-founder and former chairman Gopal Krishnan. So he was the founder, a co-founder of Infosys and also the former chairperson. So he has been, he was appointed as the first chairperson of your Reserve Bank of India's Innovation Hub. Now talking about why Mr. Rajesh Bansal has been appointed as its new CEO. So he has the experience, the expertise in the area which is required for the Innovation Hub. He has advised RBI in different RBI committee meetings. He has been working in the areas of technology, financial inclusion, payment systems. Moreover, he has 25 years of experience in designing the technology-led product, technology-led payment products, some AE instruments, some digital financial services. He has played a major role in your EKYC thing. So I am talking about that Rajesh Bansal has experience in providing more better technological products. So why is there a need of technology? Why I am talking about this? This takes us to the main objective of the innovation hub. Innovation hub bana kyu tha? Usme kaise experienced log chahiye? Kya qualities chahiye? So let's have a look at that very thing. If I talk about the objectives of this hub, the objective was to make use of technology in rendering the financial services. So we are well aware of the concept fintech, okay, financial technology where with the aid of technology we are providing the financial services so innovation hubs aim was that only that it promotes the innovation with respect to the financial sector how can we use more innovative things innovative technologies in rendering the financial service is the objective of rbih so the hub was created as a center where new ideas will come up related to this. So it's the center for ideation and incubation of new capabilities, which can be leveraged to create innovative and viable financial products and service. So what they are promoting, it's a center which will work on generating new ideas, on supporting new ideas, new capabilities, which are innovative in nature 
and which can somehow help in rendering your better financial services. So, कैसे हम और better financial products offer कर पाएंगे उसके लिए जो भी आप नए ideas generate करते हो innovations करते हो वो सारा देखने का काम आपके innovation hub का है ये new ideas को promote करता है और उन्हें support करता है ताकि RBI बी आई बेटर फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स के साथ आ सके एंड हाउ विल विल ऑल दिस हेल्प it will help in numerous ways like it will help in deepening the financial inclusion now just imagine if there were no mobile banking if there was no mobile banking okay you have to visit the bank for all basic services so the coming up of those that technology has all has eased the process it has increased the numerous services which we as customers can avail okay ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा कस्टमर्स को ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म्स की वजह से ज़्यादा सर्विसेज मिल पा रही हैं इजीली मिल पा रही हैं सो ऑब्वियसली दिस हैज हेल्प इन दी फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन कॉन्सेप्ट मेकिंग फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज अवेलेबल टू ग्रेटर ऑडियंस ओके मोर ओवर इट हैज इम्प्रूवड ऑन दी एफिशेंसी ऑफ बैंकिंग सर्विसेज नाउ थिंग्स हैव गॉन डिजिटल सो द प्रोसेस हैव सिंप्लीफाइड अ बिट ओके then it has also it can also help in strengthening the customer protection we uh, so coming up with new technologies to make sure that customers are satisfied with whatever services are being granted all these are the basic focus areas of the innovation hub so if i put up all this in simple words then the objective is to promote innovation across the financial sector with the help of technology so technology ka use karke nayi nayi innovations ke sath hum aate hain taki better financial services render ho sake the objective was to test the potential new capabilities opportunities and leverage the same to create viable products and services so technology ka use karke hum naye aur better products ke sath aaye taki ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोगों तक हम वो फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज पहुँचा सके सो दैट इट इनेबल्स अडोप्शन ऑफ वाइडर रीच एंड ग्रेटर इम्पैक्ट अक्रॉस द कंट्री मोर ओवर द हब ऑल्सो डेवलप्स द इंटरनल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर टू प्रमोट फिनटेक रिसर्च फैसिलिटेट इंगेजमेंट विद इनोवेटर्स एंड स्टार्टअप सो ये विद इन दी हब इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलप कर रहे हैं ताकि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा बेटर फिनटेक की फील्ड में रिसर्च वर्क हो सके और ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा इनोवेटर्स और स्टार्टअप्स को ये इन्वॉल्व कर रहे हैं इस चीज़ में ताकि वो न्यू आइडियाज़ के साथ आए जो ओवरऑल आरबीआई को हेल्प करेगा और इनोवेटिव प्रोडक्ट्स के साथ आने में ओके सो दिस वाज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आरबीआईएच मूविंग बैक टू आर क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट दैट इट वॉज लॉन्च इन नवम्बर सेकेंड इज इन बिकॉज ही इज नॉट द चेयरमैन ही इज दी सी ई ओ चेयरमैन वॉज गोपाल कृष्ण the third is again correct the objective which i just discussed so answer is option c 1 and 3 are correct moving on to question number 2 it says what does it refer to so let's read these statements it's a it is the group constituted by rbi under its department of economic and policy research second one says it was set up to undertake quick and effective policy oriented research backed by a anal- strong analytical and empirical basis so what they are talking about they are talking about a group that runs under the rbi's department called department of economic and policy research rbi has different departments which work in different areas so one of the department which deals in the research work is the department of economic and policy research within this department there is a group which specifically deals in the research related work so what is that department called the answer to this question is option b the development research group that group is called as the development research group so talking a bit about the development research group it was constituted by rbi under department of economic policy and research so why it was set up i have already mentioned it was set up to make sure that there is quick and effective policy oriented research jo bhi rbi ne policies banani hai usse related या फिर आर का कोई भी वर्क है उन्होंने कोई प्रोडक्ट ऑफर करना है कोई सर्विस ऑफर करनी है सो so, उन सब चीज़ों से रिलेटेड जो रिसर्च कैरी ऑन होगी दैट विल बी कैरीड आउट बाय दिस ग्रुप सो इट वाज बेसिकली फॉर्म टू अंडरटेक दी पॉलिसी ओरिएंटेड रिसर्च एंड वट एवर दब देर आर डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट ऑफ करेंट इंटरेस्ट वॉट इज गोइंग ऑन इन द इकोनॉमी वॉट्स द सिचुएशन ऑफ द इकोनॉमी ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर सो रिलेटेड टू ऑल दी दोज थिंग्स दिस ग्रुप विल कंडक्ट दी रिसर्च वर्क 
then it talks about external research activities are also supported by this group so this group doesn't just carry out the internal research but external research activities are also supported now there might be some individual researchers some institute some university which might be conducting a research in the areas which are of interest to rbi banking finance economics related research they might be carrying out so rbi supports them as well so that they can somehow contribute to the rbi in making its policies so the development research group is a forum which institutionalizes the participation of external expertise in in house research so wo apne इन हाउस में तो रिसर्च कर ही रहे होते हैं बट एक्सटर्नल अगर कोई एक्सपर्टीज है जो उस एरिया में वर्क कर रहे हैं तो उनका भी सपोर्ट आर लेता है आर बी आई द बैंक प्रोवाइड्स दी फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट उन इंस्टीट्यूशन को रिसर्चर्स को एक्सपर्ट्स को रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूशन को आर बी आई फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट करता है आर बी आई प्रोवाइड्स दी फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट सपोर्ट टू सच यूनिवर्सिटीज और एक्सपर्ट्स सो दैट दे कैन फैसिलिटेट थियोरिटिकल एज वेल एज दी क्वान्टिटेटिव रिसर्च in the field of economic bank economics banking finance and other subjects which are of interest to rbi then whatever studies are conducted they are a result of collaborated efforts between your in house experts rbi ke andar jo talented log hain wo to research karte hi hai unke sath sath external experts external organizations bhi research work karte hain so dono ke support ke sath research papers aate hain nayi studies aati hai Why I'm discussing this concept because recently RBI has released uh, two of the research works conducted by research development groups on its website. So you must be aware about what is this group all about, what it deals in. So these studies are also released for wider circulation on the RBI website. So you can go through the study which RBI conducts. So this was the concept of development research group. Moving on to question number three. The Reserve Bank has decided that it will consider amalgamation of the strict central cooperative banks that is DCCBs with the state cooperative banks that is STCBs subject to various conditions. So which of the following options correctly relates to the RBI guidelines of amalgamation of DCCBs with the STCB? so uh, question number 3 as well as question number 4 deals with this very notification of rbi where it talked about the amalgamation of dccbs and the stcc stcbs so if you remember when i began these sessions in the month of april i took one of the sessions on amalgamation of the urban cooperative banks so there the rbi came up with notification uh, to amalgamate the urban cooperative banks now we have now this notification have come up which is not related to the urban cooperative banks but some banks covered under the rural cooperative banking that is your dccbs and state cooperative banks so let us discuss a bit about this amalgamation also in that session i discussed in detail about what's amalgamation so you can go to that session if you haven't watched it amalgamation is nothing but two entities coming up together to form a larger entity which offers them numerous benefits okay the entity which is getting taken over by some other bank the bank which is getting taken over is amalgamated bank and the bank which takes it over is the amalgamating bank so all those things have been discussed under that session as well so talking about this very notification Uh, so um, rbi has come up with this notification where it has decided that it will consider the proposal for amalgamating your district central cooperative banks and the state cooperative banks subject to various conditions and the proposal should be made by the state government concerned so if there is a, a bank a district central bank in a state and a state cooperative bank and they want to amalgamate together then the state government okay needs to make a proposal to rbi regarding that amalgamation now rbi brought up a act called banking regulation and amendment act in 2020 so the objective of this act was to bring together your state cooperative banks your district central cooperative banks under the purview of rbi so now uh, rbi has notified that these that 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 very act which uh, deals with 
bringing the state cooperative banks and your district cooperative banks under RBI purview will now be implemented from 1st April 2021. According to that, if these DCCBs and state cooperative banks want to amalgamate, then they will need an RBI sanction for the same and RBI approval for the same. So recently, RBI came out with the guidelines after few state governments approach it for amalgamation of these two types of banks as a two-tier short-term cooperative credit structure. So state governments may RBI ko appeal kiya hai ki in banks ka amalgamation allow kare under a two under a short term cooperative credit structure. So let us see what is this short term cooperative credit structure. Talking about the cooperative banking structure, we have two main components. We have the urban cooperative banks and the rural cooperative banks. In the previous session, which I took in April, there I talked about the amalgamation of urban cooperative banks. Urban cooperative banks have a single tier structure, complicated structure nahi hai. But rural cooperative banks have a complicated structure. Under rural cooperative banks, we have two different structures. The short term and the long term cooperative credit structure. So let me show you the structure. So cooperative credit institutions are classified as urban cooperative banks and the rural cooperative credit institutions. So this is a simple structure, not bifurcated in a complex manner. But if I talk about the rural cooperative credit institutions, there we have some short term structures as well as the long term structures. Okay. Talking about the short term cooperative credit structure, it comprises of three different kinds of institutions. So at village level, they have some primary agricultural credit societies. Then at the intermediate level, they have some district central cooperative banks. And thirdly, under the at the apex level, at the topmost level, they have the state cooperative banks. So here we are not dealing with the credit societies, but only amalgamation of DCCBs and the SDCBs. So ye teen type ke organizations aapke short term cooperative credit structure ke under aate. You can have a look at it. The state cooperative banks, the central cooperative banks and the primary agricultural credit societies. Now, as the name suggests, short term cooperative credit structure. So ye wo banks hai. Wo organizations hain jo short term ke funding provide karti hain. So these STCCs, they provide the crop and other working capital loans for short period to the farmers, to the rural artisans. Apne working capital requirements, basic crop requirements meet karne ke liye short term mein jo paisa chahiye, wo ye organizations, ye banks provide karte hain. Talking about the long term cooperative credit structure, there further we have two different kinds of banks. The state cooperative agriculture rural development banks which are there at the state level and the primary cooperative agriculture and rural development banks which we have at the district level. So in ka kaam kya hai, what work they serve, they provide the middle and short term loans, sorry middle to long term loans. Wo short term loans provide karta tha, ye medium to long term loans provide karega for investments in agriculture, rural industries etc. So this is the a long term structure where we have state cooperative, agriculture, rural development banks and primary cooperative ones. So this is the cooperative banking structure. Talking about the guidelines related to amalgamation. So Reserve Bank will consider the proposal for amalgamation if following conditions are met. Agar jo bhi proposal state government de rahi hai RBI ko, agar wo ye teen criteria meet karte hai, to hi RBI unke proposals ko consider karega. So what's the criteria? First is that the state government of the state should make a proposal to amalgamate one or more DCCBs in state with SDCB. So, the state government hai, jaha pe, us state ki jaha pe aapka DCCB or SCCB located hai, us state government ko RBI ko amalgamation ka proposal dena padega. And that proposal needs to be made after conducting a detailed study of the legal framework along with additional capital inclusion strategy, financial support if required, business model, governance model of the amalgamated bank. So state government also needs to provide the legal framework of amalgamation that what and further all the details with respect to 
the additional capital which might be required some financial support which might be required that the state government will provide what is the governance model of your bank which is going to get amalgamated what's the business model how can it be profitable so entire proposal along with the legal framework needs to be made by state government to the rbi secondly the rb the proposal requires the approval of the majority of shareholders so the dccb and stcb they want to amalgamate so it's very important that approval of both the bank's shareholder is there dono banks ke shareholders ke approval ke baad hi amalgamation ka proposal diya jayega and thirdly the proposal of state government has been examined and recommended by nabard so if nabard approves your proposal then only the proposal will be approved by rbi okay so rbi and nabard together give the approval for amalgamation of these banks moving ahead what is the regulatory criteria so what rules regulations are to be met to consider amalgamation to be a legal one so first is that the proposal should comply with all the legal requirements and past orders or rulings of courts if any so jo bhi aap proposal de rahe ho whatever proposal you are giving for amalgamation you should make sure that there is no past ruling which prohibits such amalgamation koi aisa past mein order nahi hona chahiye court ka jo aapki amalgamation ko allow nahi karta koi stay nahi laga hona chahiye and all those things so sari legal requirements properly meet karni hongi tabhi aapka proposal consider kiya jayega secondly the financial parameters of amalgamated entity should be robust so the dccb which is going to get amalgamated it, its financial health should be good enough uske financial parameters robust hone chahiye strong hone chahiye good enough hone chahiye so we have the capital adequacy ratio okay capital adequacy requirement that you should maintain enough capital so that crar that capital ratio should be met the minimum requirement should be met ki itni capital rakhni hai to utni minimum capital us dccb ko rakhni chahiye then there are npa rates as uh, thresholds prescribed ki aapka jo npas hai wo jo abhi aapka npa ka ratio hai wo 7% ya 5% se zyada nahi hona chahiye the more npas npas you have it denotes your more bad financial position okay you are having more of defaults more of bad loans so the thresholds have been prescribed that within this uh, your uh, npa should range your crr should meet the minimum criteria then only you will be considered as a financially viable entity to be considered for the amalgamation proposal approval then talking about the state cooperative bank which is going to take up the uh, dccb it should have a good record of good conducting good regulatory and supervisory compliance uski strong enough governance or management practices hone chahiye so it should it should stand good on the aspects of regulatory compliance supervisory compliance governance so in sub areas mein wo satisfactory track record hona chahiye stcb ka stcb jo hai wo district cooperative bank ko apne sath merge karne ja raha hai तो बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि वो प्रॉपरली चीज़ें मैनेज कर पाता है सही से गवर्नेंस कर पाए सो दीज आर दी क्राइटेरियाज विच नीड टू बी मेड नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट दी अप्रूवल प्रोसेस सो टू स्टेप प्रोसेस होता है आपके प्रपोजल के अप्रूवल का फर्स्ट स्टेप इज द इन प्रिंसिपल अप्रूवल सो देर आर सम कंडीशन विच नीड टू बी मेड सम बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट्स एंड इफ यू मीड दोज रिक्वायरमेंट देन फर्स्ट अप्रूवल विल बी गिवन टू यू सेकेंड अप्रूवल final of which is the final approval will be given by nabard and reserve bank so pehle aapko in in principle approval milega uske baad aapka jo proposal hai wo nabard aur reserve bank bhi approve karega tabhi amalgamation allow kiya jayega talking about some general con- considerations which will which govern your in principle approval okay i talked about in principle approval so the scheme of amalgamation should be presented to the shareholders of both these banks and two third majority se wo resolution pass hona chahiye so aapko dono hi banks ke shareholders ka two third majority approval chahiye then a agreement is required a voluntary agreement which is called as the memorandum of understanding MOU will be executed by the constituents that is your amalgamating DCCBs your STCB your state government so aapas mein inke beech ek agreement hona chahiye which covers the issues that what we will be doing if uh, some problem in governance arises if some hr issue arises 
and such copy of that MOU needs to be submitted with RBI and NABARD. Then, those uh, uh, chartered accountant here, they also need to verify the entire proposal. So, due diligence on amalgamating entities need to be carried out by chartered accountants. Now, the DCCB, there might be one DCCB, there might be two or many DCCBs which want to amalgamate with a SGCB. So, uh, the shares which will be allotted to those amalgamating entities in the amalgamating bank, jo DCCB ko share milega in the, in the um, STCB, wo aapko, aapki net worth ke basis pe decide kiya jata. It gets decided on the basis of net worth. But if uh, the share swap ratio based on net worth cannot be ascertained in such manner that you can allot some shares to DCCB, enough shares itne, itne capital nahi hai ki enough shares allot kiye jaye dccb ko to state government jo hai use capital infuse karni padegi taki at least one share to har dccb ko mile if as a result of share swap ratio shareholders of some dccbs cannot be allotted any shares then the state government will infuse capital to ensure that shareholders of such dccb are allotted at least one share each har shareholder ko at least ek share mil jaye itni capital fir state government infuse karega then the STCCB need to adhere to the CRAR basic capital adequacy norms and then uh, it also needs to make sure that proper IT system is there. Now talking further, when this amalgamation uh, uh, process is approved, then uh, a new board will be formed of the amalgamated bank, new MD, new CEO will be appointed. As per the RBI's criteria, new board of directors will be appointed within three months of amalgamation. So the banks need to agree that they will adhere to these norms, okay, if they want an approval. Then when a DCCB amalgamates with the STCB, what happens in that case? Then the banking license which were issued to STCB, it will continue after the amalgamation as well. Wo banking license uske paas rahega STCB ke paas aur wo apne banking license ke andar banking business conduct karta hai, kar sakta hai. But if I talk about DCCBs, wo to amalgamate ho gai to unko apna license surrender karna padega kyunki wo ab STCB ka part ban jayenge. So DCCBs which are being amalgamated into STCB need to surrender their licenses to RBI. And the process of surrendering this license should be completed within three months of amalgamation. Further, if your existing branches of DCCBs are converted into the branches of STCB, then the STCB will be required to apply for branch license from RBI for all these existing DCCBs within three months of amalgamation. Now, DCCB operate kara tha as a bank, unki apni kuch branches thi. Now, wo bank jo hai, wo aapka STCC, STCB ke saath amalgamate ho gaya. So, the existing branches of the DCCB are now in the state cooperative bank. But they are not going to come like that. State cooperative banks have to take a license to the branches to operate. And all of this should be in three months after amalgamation. Okay. So, STCB shall also seek approval of RBI for shifting of branches and opening any new place of business if required. So this was all about these guidelines. Moving back to our question, we had to identify that which option correctly relates to these guidelines. So the answer is option B, which says that the proposal of amalgamation will be examined by RBI and NABAT and it is a two-stage process. Okay. Pehle mein likha hai ki wo four-stage process hai, to wo wrong hai. It's a two-stage process. And DCCB shall make proposal to amalgamate itself to RBI? No, the state government will make a proposal. And the next is here the mistake is that it should be 2020. And here the approval of SEBI is not needed but RBI and NABAT ka approval chahiye. So answer is option B. Now moving on to last question which is also related to these guidelines only. It says... The cooperative banking structure in India comprises two main components, the urban cooperative banks and the rural cooperative banks, the rural cooperative credit institutions. So while your urban cooperative banks have single tier structure, rural has a complex structure. Which of the following does not form a part of rural cooperative credit institutions? So I just discussed about it in this very chart. Okay. So 
if I talk about the district central cooperative banks, they were covered, the DCCBs, the state cooperative banks, they were also covered and state cooperative agriculture and rural development banks, they were also covered. I'll show you. So they are, um, they are talking about three things, the, this, this and this. So all these are part of your Rural Cooperative Credit Institution. So question ne pucha gaya what has, what has been asked in the question. Which of these is not a part? All of these are part. So answer is none of the above three banks. So this is all part. Aisa koi nahi hai jo iska part nahi hai. So this was all for today's session. I hope you found it useful. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much for watching the video.